and welcome to this fifth and final video in this series on doing map design or making maps of QGIS. In um, this video, we'll be talking about doing the final design or the layout of the map. If you remember back to the first video of this series, this was our goal. So we will try to get to a map that looks something like this. We will, um, and until now, what we have done is that we have created the data, we have labeled the data, we have put in symbols for capitals and so on. So the data is now ready and it has been symbolized correctly. What we now need to do, we take this symbolized data and arrange it on our output media. So doing this layout process. It will be covering things like the layout editor, the individual map frames that are in these areas here. They have a theme, so which layers are in them. They have a scale, they have a coordinate reference system. They can have an overview, which is this red box here, saying where and when this map is this map frame. Finally, we talk about scale bars, legends, and text. So um, it's going to be a, a longer video. So um, let's jump in. So back in QGIS, um, all I've done since last video is that I have uh, added some text to the different um, values of our raster layer. So it's a bit more useful on our legend. Apart from that, this is where we left off. We um, do the layout. We go to our project menu and go and say new print layout. Let's just call it map one. And this will open our map of design layout interface. So it's a, it's a new window within the same application to QGIS that can be confusing sometimes. Um, some of the buttons are the same. So this save, that's the same as that save. Um, so there are some things that are the same zoom. But other things that look like, so this zoom here, is now a zoom within the paper here. They lay out of this layout, layout tool is that we have this center thing here. This is the output theme or output media. If um, I right click on it, it's now selected. And over my items, I can see this item properties. It says that this is an A4. If I'm going to be an R size, I can choose an R size or custom and specify 15 by 15 centimeters if it's going to be a little illustration in a report. Um, for now, I will leave it as an A4. We can always change this by going back, finding somewhere where we can access this white paper, clicking on it, and going to item properties. Item properties is where most of the work is done in this tool. Over here we have different tools for inserting and modifying elements on our layout. So we can insert a map frame, which is this map role here. And I can say, okay, I want one map to be somewhere over here, over in this area here. And I want another map somewhere there. So these maps here, I can have um, follow some things from the basic QGIS. So, and some things are different. Now I can have different scales on these. For instance, so I make sure that my section two, I say this one, which is map one, I can set the scale of this to let's say four million. And let's see if I, no. this, I, it can scale. This has not affected the scale 
over here. So now I'm just playing around with the scale within this map frame. I can also move what I'm seeing in it. So this one tool up here, the white arrow, that enables me to move and resize my map frames. This tool here, which is if you come from the Adobe family, the direct select, that enables me to move the content within my frame. So I just want to start to come to appear. And let's see if I want to rearrange it a bit. We can lose this margin a bit. Uh, my, as I work with my size of my map, um, my scale change, that's Bit annoying we can avoid that by using this icon here at the end if i click on it go to edit and type in or the scale of one to four million is locked in so never mind what i do so if i change the size of this it will stay at the scale of 4 million. So let's change what I see, which I see on my map. So sometimes it's useful to be able to lock um, the scale using that little trick. This one down here is going to be my overview map. So I want that to be at a completely different scale, let's say 20 million. That would be get this one here. So this is the one I want to change. And the reason why it's not working is because I didn't choose the right tool. So 20 million. So now it's at a scale of 20 million. I can also change the corner reference system, but no. To something else but let's leave it as they are at the moment um one thing that you should notice is that hey they are the same content i don't want that and if i go into my standard QGIS window say okay what well, i want to see my uh, open street map They also both change. So I need a way of having different settings of layers in QGIS. That's called a theme. So this little eye is a theme tool. I click on it, I can say add a theme. So if I want to have my detail view, it will be my towns and my borders and my global land cover I say this theme is going to be detail details I want to get rid of all these and have another theme that we'll call overview add overview that means that I now I can switch between the two themes over here, which of course is nice. But most importantly is that I now in my layout tool here and choose this map, say this map has to follow the theme details. This map here has to follow the theme overview. So now we're going to have two different contents at the same time. So that's a really important step. So this is about creating themes that are a combination of layers. Say, so, okay, naming them, and then use this follow theme in here. The other thing I also want to do, is I want this map frame here to depict what I see over in this one over here. I can do that by including an overview. So 
I right click on the one to make, have, make sure it's selected. So map two is selected. That one is map one. And I can then go down to my overview and add an overview and say I want to add this overview as to reference map frame one. So this red area references this map over here. I don't want this red box here. I just click it and I get this standard style editor that we've seen earlier. So I can say that I there and dot no fill. So no brush, I want the brush on the edge, and I want it to be red. And maybe a bit thicker. So make if I had many, it would be nice to know that well this is the red one, that's the blue one, and so on. So I can click on this one and in its item properties. Go down and find its frame and say that it's going to have a frame that is going to be red. And a bit bigger so we can see it. So now we have a red frame there and a red frame there referencing so. So that's basic setting of my of my mapping here. Um, I also want to be able to display the scale. Um, it can be done in different ways, but this is a scale bar. And if I drag my scale bar, it can be on top of a map or anywhere, it doesn't really matter. First thing we have to be quite sure about is that which map does this scale bar belong to? Is it that one or that one? So in this case, let's check so that this map here is map one. So this scale bar down here should reference map one. So that's fine. I want to make it look a bit nicer. So um, I personally don't like that box. So I just have a line with thick. Um, it's a bit difficult to see at the moment. So probably give it a background. Um, Oh, that's probably too much. Let's make it a bit more dark. Um, because it's a detail map, there is um, a tendency where you can give it the extra subdivision. So each of these are 50 kilometers, so that's 25. Um, so this makes it a bit more easy to make precise measurements. So that was my scale bar for that window. Add a new one, this one. In there, make sure it's referencing the right map. So map two, that's fine. Set it to a line. And that looks really ugly. So in this case, I have to make, there's not enough room for the numbers. What I want to do is I want to make the intervals larger. Doesn't really matter. Normally it's nice to have it a hundred meters, or sorry, hundred kilometers. But let's but in this case I'll probably set it to uh two hundred and fifty kilometers. So and maybe just like in the other one have it side. Maybe just go that closer. Fiddling around, making a map takes a long time. Just for good measures, I just want to lock this scale into 20 million. So now I can fiddle along with it while it's changing its scale. So I got 20 million and I got 4 million. Um, a title. Text box. There's this guide, so I can see that I'm now aligned. Drag it on. Item properties. Global land cover. 
2000. Probably need a bit bigger. Big font. Set the size to, let's say, 45. Yeah. Um, set the alignment to left. So that was that was my title. So don't write map of go play and cover something like that. Um, legend this one down here and find the alignment tool. Oh, lots of work to do here. So this one is controlled again by the item. But before being able to edit it out here, I have to turn off this auto update. So if I now change anything on the Arcugus window, it will not reflect here. So this is the last thing you do. So turn off auto the auto today. Look at what it says. It says mm, Hugus map populated place, not really good title there. So I will probably choose that, choose the pencil. Uh, not get rid of populated places, get rid of Hugis map. That, um, that one with no symbol, that's, if it wasn't in my classification, get rid of that one. It's, it's a bit silly having capital and all, all before capitals. So I'll just move that one up. Just have capital, all others, that's fine. Um, borderlines. Don't really want them just they're there for look nice get them out of my legend open street map again there it just, it just says open street map not much using that so get rid of that now i've got this big thing left um for it to be able to fit in my space i'll probably have to add some columns down here because it's two columns and I will allow it to split a layer into two. So I know it's not that nice, but necessary in this case. Uh, what does it say? That doesn't look nice. It said that one there. Band gray doesn't really make sense. I think I should right click on it. No, maybe minus. Yep. Um, this one could have a title. So this this is this global length of a class perhaps more correctly and cover class um there it's an inchy bit too large so we'll have to do something about that um I think the easiest just to decrease the font of the text a wee bit. So that's on the items. So here, so I'll go find the item label, choose its font, decrease it up to 11. So much nicer. So now I have my legend in place. Spatial data is different from what's other data in that it is copyrighted. So you need to check when you use data from different sources, you need to check what is the copyright and license of it. Um, it's not always obvious. You have to do a bit digging. Um, in this case, the ones that it was obvious for was um, the, the open street map. So open street map is copyrighted with a creative commons, um, which is attribute. So you have to mention that the data is from OpenStreetMap and it is a share like that means that you are allowed to share and modify. The symbol for this is Creative Commons Reference Share Like Version 2. So let's pinch that text there um, and go in here. Um, Also, um, our history, uh, sorry, my, our data from the European Environmental Agent. So this 
Global Lanco is also share alike, and so is my open uh, Mozo Natural. Uh, so I'll add some text referencing them. So just to make sure that it is, yep, here's the text. Make sure to get the guides. So we say, uh, data in main map from EEA Wi-Fi version of global and My detail map is data from EA's modified version of global and cover and natural earth populated places. One we can see. Um, overview map. Based on. From the street map, and we know that this was this copyrighted reference share alike. And then of course, I should say that anyone else can take this map I made. So, map layout and also add that I will follow Creative Commons reference share like add this to like that i think that's um probably shouldn't be that big this is more or less legal tech so uh let's decrease that to um data in main map maybe we should put this in uh, from EA and natural earth, blah blah. Um, that's fine. Good. So basically, I'm finished. I've made my map more or less as it looked in the start. So I hope you um, stuck on to the end where um, we um, have made this map. We have um, gone all the way through these five videos, loading data, filtering data, symbolizing data, and finally doing the layout. All the all the videos of this series are linked in the description. So I hope you liked it. Hope to see you in other videos. Bye.